Friends premiered on NBC nearly 30 years ago, running for 10 seasons. In that time, quite a few guest stars, actors with recurring roles, and one main cast member have died. Here's the full list. Friends fans were shocked on October 28, 2023, when news broke that Matthew Perry had died at the age of 54. The cause has yet to be determined, but as of the making of this video, he died in an apparent drowning in his hot tub at his Los Angeles home. He was best known for his role as Chandler Bing, the quick-witted and sarcastic member of the Friends core cast. When in doubt, Chandler could always be counted on to deliver a clever quip. Can I interest you in a sarcastic comment? Over the course of the show, Chandler experienced some of the best character development out of all six of the friends. In the beginning, he was the embodiment of a non-committal man-child and corporate hanger-on. By the time he began his relationship with Monica at the end of Season 4 and into Season 5, he showed signs of maturity and responsibility. The two marry in Season 7, Episode 23, the one with Monica and Chandler's wedding, and welcome a pair of twins in the series finale, the last one. Perry continued his career in television with prominent roles in Aaron Sorkin's Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip and his own revival of The Odd Couple. He also published his best-selling memoir, Friends, Lovers, and The Big Terrible Thing, in which he detailed years of addiction issues. If Friends had a seventh friend or a character most familiar to even casual viewers beyond the main six, it was Gunther, the manager of the gang's coffee shop hangout. He was often seen flitting around in the background at Central Perk, waiting on customers and pulling espresso shots while rocking a tie, a loud shirt, and tightly cropped bleached blonde hair. On the occasion that Gunther spoke in one of his more than 150 appearances, it was to quietly and forlornly express his unrequited love for former co-worker Rachel, or to deliver a blistering barb against her on-again, off-again boyfriend, Ross. When's your birthday? May 5th. Why? Oh, I, I, I'm just making a list of people's birthdays. Oh, mine's December. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> In real life, to help pay the bills between gigs in addition to his continuing role as Gunther, actor James Michael Tyler worked at a Hollywood coffee shop called The Bourgeois Pig. He told BuzzFeed in 2014, I was one of their first baristas. I think I started there in 1990 or so. He appeared on the long-awaited, long-delayed Friends reunion special in 2021, but via Zoom because of health concerns. Tyler told Today that he had been diagnosed with advanced prostate cancer in 2018, and the disease had spread to his bones. In October 2021, the 59-year-old actor died. Jennifer Aniston, who played Rachel, wrote in an Instagram post, Friends would not have been the same without you. Thank you for the laughter you brought to the show and to all of our lives. You will be so missed. Rachel's overbearing father, Dr. Leonard Green, may only appear in four Friends episodes, but he casts a huge shadow over the show, especially Rachel's character. Dr. Green was extremely well-to-do in his career, but quite hands-off with his children. And as a result, his three daughters have become spoiled brats who have no idea how the world works at all. When we finally meet gruff Dr. Green in Season 2's The One with the Two Parties, so much about Rachel's upbringing and current neuroses become clear. We also have some moments of empathy for Rachel, who is desperately trying to break out of the old entitled patterns that no longer serve her as a wannabe self-sufficient career woman. While Dr. Green was a character we loved to hate, we all could agree with him on one thing. Ross is a jerk, and Rachel could do better. Actor Ron Liebman had a long and distinguished career across movies, television, and the stage that included a Tony Award for his work in Angels in America. Liebman passed away in December of 2019 of pneumonia complications at the age of 82. Mr. Trigger was the gruff, no-nonsense superintendent of the New York City apartment building in which Monica, Rachel, Chandler, and Joey resided on Friends, and he factored into the plots of five episodes between 1995 and 2001. Probably the most memorable occasion came in the 1997 installment, the one with the ballroom dancing. After catching Rachel stuffing the trash chute and making her cry, Mr. Trigger decides to evict her and Monica from the building, leading Joey to stick up for his friends and agreeing to be the Super's ballroom dance practice partner at a superintendent's ball. Portraying Mr. Trigger was a prolific and highly recognizable character actor Mike Haggerty, known for his mustache, his Chicago accent, and his tendency to play working-class characters. Before Friends, he played a cable TV station employee in Wayne's World and the best friend in Overboard. After Friends, he appeared in Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Shameless, and in 2022, he was part of the main cast of HBO's Somebody Somewhere. The star of that show, Bridget Everett, announced on Instagram that Haggerty had died on May 5th, 2022, writing, A beloved character actor, 
His love of his hometown of Chicago and his family were the cornerstones of his life. According to TMZ, Haggerty suffered a negative reaction to an antibiotic used to treat a leg infection, and he fell into a coma. The actor was 67 years old. Before Gunther for a brief moment in Friends history, there was Terry, a surly coffee shop owner whose tongue was as sharp as his black coffee. While only on screen for two episodes, Terry offered one of the most cruel descriptions of Phoebe's music. It's so dreadfully mean it somehow comes all the way back around to funny. She makes me want to put my finger through my eye into my brain and swirl it around. <laughs> It's also courtesy of Terry that we have one of the show's most memorable cameos, as Chrissy Hind from The Pretenders plays an open mic set at the cafe. Eventually, Phoebe even teaches her the chorus of her infamous ditty, Smelly Cat. While actor Max Wright might be better known for his turn as Mr. Tanner on ALF, his mark on Friends as Terry is indelible. Wright passed away at the age of 75 in June 2019, after a long battle with cancer. A key part of Monica's character arc finds her chasing her lifelong dream of being a chef, and on her difficult road down that path, she writes a review of Alessandro's Italian restaurant for the Chelsea Reporter. The review absolutely eviscerates the establishment to such a degree that its owner, Alessandro, actually comes to Monica's apartment to chew her out. While there, Monica learns that the reason the food was so bad was because Alessandro doesn't actually know how to cook. Also, he's not even Italian, he's Lebanese. After tasting Monica's food, a begrudging Alessandro invites Monica to be his new head chef, which turns into another huge conflict as the old head chef was literally related to everyone else on staff, so their anger turns to her. She concocts shenanigans with Joey to get her new staff to take her seriously. Actor Taylor Negron, who memorably brought Alessandro to life, was diagnosed with liver cancer in 2008 and succumbed to the illness in January 2015 at the age of 57. Ross Geller's relationships are so dysfunctional he's on a first-name basis with his divorce attorney, Russell. Russell is constantly disturbed by Ross's compulsive behavior, but he also recognizes a cash cow when he sees one, calling Ross one of his favorite clients thanks to all the business. Ross got divorced not once, but twice in a year, first from Emily Waltham after saying Rachel's name at the altar, and then later from Rachel after a blackout drunk drive through Elvis' wedding in Vegas. Russell is the one to give Rachel the unfortunate news that Ross didn't actually file the annulment papers since he didn't want to be divorced three times. The moment has big consequences for the entire gang, not just Rachel and Ross. Played by Ron Glass, who was better known for his roles on Barney Miller and Firefly, Russell was a rare voice of reason on Friends. Glass passed away in November 2016 of undisclosed causes at the age of 71. Friends didn't often go into dream territory, rarely exploring alternate avenues for the characters or offering fresh perspectives on the past and future. But thankfully, fans do have the two parts, the one that could have been, which dives into an alternate universe in which Rachel married Barry. Monica never lost all that weight. Joey stayed on at Days of Our Lives. Chandler is an aspiring comedian. Ross and Carol remain unhappily married. And in the biggest twist of all, Phoebe is an investment banker who chain smokes rather than a floopy vegetarian masseuse with a unique fashion sense. It's in Phoebe's portion of the story that Paul Gleason, perhaps best known as Vice Principal Vernon from The Breakfast Club, appears as her boss, Jack. He's concerned after Phoebe loses millions of dollars on a bad deal and has a heart attack. Gleason passed away in May 2006 at the age of 67, after struggling with mesothelioma and lung cancer complications caused by asbestos exposure. One of the other narrative tricks that kept things lively on Friends was the overwhelming number of celebrity cameos, with A-listers often playing love interests for the gang. One of the rare non-romantic cameos comes courtesy of Robin Williams and Billy Crystal as Thomas and Tim in the one with the ultimate fighting champion. Thomas and Tim make their way onto the gang's couch in Central Park on a particularly busy morning as a hysterical Thomas tries to figure out who might be having an affair with his wife. As it turns out, the culprit is Tim himself which unfolds in dialogue that was improvised by Williams and Crystal on set, according to Screen Rant. Hey, you are no longer my friend. We are finished. The gang is in awe, and rightfully so, watching these two comedic masters at work. Heartbreakingly, Robin Williams died by suicide on August 11th, 2014, after a long struggle with a number of physical and mental health issues. He was 63. 
Ross Geller famously had a pet monkey during the first season of Friends. Marcel is a capuchin, who starts off sweet but quickly grows more and more aggressive as he ages, leading to an uncomfortable adulthood in which he cannot stop humping everything around him, including Rachel's childhood stuffed animals. As his friends get more and more annoyed with Marcel's disruptions, Ross decides to let the Bronx Zoo adopt him. But that's when he goes to visit, he finds out from shifty zoo administrator Dean Lipson that Marcel has died. Or has he? The intrigue builds when a janitor tells Ross that Marcel has been shipped out to California to become an actor in Hollywood, and the zoo wants to keep the information under wraps. And Ross finds out that Marcel will be starring in Outbreak 2 filming locally, he's able to say goodbye to his old friend with his favorite song, In the Jungle. Comedy icon Fred Willard might only have been on screen briefly in Friends as Lipson, but he brought his characteristic snark to the role in a way that played perfectly with Ross's natural suspicion. Willard passed away in May 2020 of a sudden heart attack at the age of 86, never having retired from acting. In season 4, the one with Joey's Dirty Day, Joey lands another acting gig. This time it's a high-profile one, in a movie starring the legendary Charlton Heston. Before he reports to the set, Joey takes Chandler on a fishing trip, and upon returning, falls asleep while memorizing his lines. He doesn't get to take a shower before going to work and smells terrible. So he sneaks into the only dressing room equipped with a shower, Heston's. The seasoned professional discovers Joey, writes off his misbehavior to nerves, and warns him not to cross him again. <laughs> Put some pants on, kid, so I can kick your butt. <laughs> An icon of epic biblical films in the 1950s, Heston starred as Moses in The Ten Commandments and as the title character in Ben-Hur, which won him an Academy Award. In the 60s and 70s, he shifted to headlining big-budget dystopian sci-fi movies, including The Omega Man, Planet of the Apes, and Soylent Green. Heston's family told CNN that the actor died at home in Beverly Hills on April 5, 2008 at his home, not long after entering the latter stages of Alzheimer's disease. Heston was 84. Joey often talked about his large Italian family and his grandmothers in particular. Season 5's The One Where Ross Can't Flirt introduces one of them, Nani. Joey invites her over to see him on an episode of Law & Order. However, his scenes ended up getting cut, so he scrambles to film a fake Law & Order episode to trick his Nani, who reportedly doesn't know any English other than the name Sam Waterson, and enough to eavesdrop on an embarrassing conversation involving Ross. French actress Lydian Chauvard played Nani. In the years before that appearance, she regularly featured in The Young and the Restless, Days of Our Lives, and Falcon Crest. She also hosted and produced the business cable TV talk show, Hollywood Structured. After Friends, Chauvard guest starred on Ugly Betty, Frasier, and Malcolm in the Middle. According to Chauvard's Los Angeles Times obituary, the actor died in June 2008, four decades after a breast cancer diagnosis due to congestive heart disease. She was 82. The same person played two very different roles in back-to-back -back seasons of Friends. In the season 6 episode, the one with Rachel's sister, Alexis Arquette plays a customer at Central Park. And then in season 7, the one with Chandler's dad, Arquette returns as a server at the Las Vegas Drag Club, where Chandler's transgender parent performs. Both episodes make clear reference to family, and Alexis was part of the prominent acting Arquette family, along with siblings Patricia, Rosanna, and David. David was a fellow Friends guest and once husband of Courtney Cox. A trans woman, Alexis documented her transition in Alexis Arquette, She's My Brother. Arquette was best known for small but important parts in two major 90s movies. The reluctant criminal who unloads a gun at John Travolta and Samuel L. Jackson's hitmen in Pulp Fiction, and the Boy George obsessed keyboardist and the wedding band in The Wedding Singer. Arquette died in September 2016 at age 47, due to a bacterial infection and cardiac event complicated by HIV. Stan Kirsch was only on one episode of Friends, but it was a very memorable one that would possibly cause some controversy if it aired today. In the one with the ick factor, Monica goes to a college party and pretends to be 22 instead of her actual age of 26. She meets a cute guy named Ethan who says he's a senior, and Monica agrees to go out with him even under her false pretenses, thinking he's in college. After the two sleep together, Monica finds out that Ethan is really a senior in high school and only 17 to boot making this not just an ick factor, but an actual crime in some places. My lie didn't make one of us a felon in 48 states! <laughs> Kirsch, better known for his long run on the Highlander television series, played Ethan. He died by suicide in January of 2020 at the age of 51. Iris is Monica's aunt who shows up in the season 1 episode, the one with all the poker. She is a bit abrasive and rough around the edges, which is probably why Monica seeks her assistance in helping her and her friends 
learn how to play poker. Antares is apparently an old card shark who's been playing poker since early childhood. She agrees to help but is rude, impatient, and claims to have hit Tony Randall with a car. But that was just a lesson in bluffing. Beverly Garland played the sketchy aunt, one of nearly 200 roles in her nearly 60-year career. Really? No, that's bluffing. Lesson number one. She started off in low-budget movies like It Conquered the World and Swamp Women, then portrayed Barbara Harper Douglas in My Three Sons, one of the dozens of sitcom parts. In December 2008, the Los Angeles Times reported that Garland died at her home in the Hollywood Hills following a long period of illness. Garland was 82. Phoebe's adoptive grandmother Frances only appears in one Friends episode, but it's a very significant one for the most eccentric friend of the bunch. Phoebes didn't actually know that she and her sister had been adopted at all, or the photographs of her father around Frances' house were actually the placeholder images that came with the picture frames, explaining why Phoebe insists for the rest of the series that her grandmother is in hell. Thankfully though, before Frances' death, she guides Phoebe to her actual father, Frank Buffet. Phoebe also finds out about her brother, Frank Jr., which sets up many new character arcs for the most eccentric of the friends and her even stranger family, like the time she carries her brother on his much older wife's triplets. Frances was played by Audra Lindley, iconic for her role as Mrs. Roper on Three's Company. She died in October of 1997 after a long struggle with leukemia, meaning she never had a chance to see how her small appearance on the show would in fact change pop culture history. Sadly, too many Friends guest stars have passed away to discuss them all in full in this video. The others include Gary Collins, who played himself, Conchata Ferrell, who played a judge in season 6, Joel Beeson, who played Todd the Ombre Man, Mary Pat Gleason, who played Nurse Sizemore, Shelley Berman, who played Mr. Kaplan, Peter Dennis, who played Sherman Whitfield, Kelly Waymeyer, who played Colleen, Gretchen Weiler, who played Mrs. Burkett, Phil Leeds, who played Mr. Edelman, Elena Reed Hall, who played the admissions woman, Richard Rote, who played Bert, Danny Dayton, who played Buddy Doyle, Paxton Whitehead, who played Mr. Waltham. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline by dialing 988 or by calling 1-800-273-TALK-8255.